Wow, gold is above $1,500 and silver is back above $17. I want to cover a lot in this video, but the first thing I want to touch on is Jeff Clark's article that just came out about gold's breakout. Does that mean that silver is on the launch pad? It, it's a very, very good sign. But he did some very interesting analysis here. He's created some charts that are the price swings, the maximum price and the minimum price for each year. So this is the trading range for each year going back into 2013. And what it shows is that we've been getting a series of higher lows and now recently higher highs, which is the indication that's the definition of a bull market, higher lows and higher highs. And so gold has done this breakout and you can see that today, this, this is the amount of price swing, but today it's above $1,500. So you're talking about uh, exceeding a price that goes all the way back into 2014. Uh, so this is an article that is really worth reading. Silver, however, has its, you know, in its uh, trading range, you know, the maximum minimum price for these years, you can see that silver Yes, for the last year we've been getting higher lows, but we've been getting lower highs. So it hasn't truly broken out into its bull market, but it could be that it's just about to do that because silver typically lags gold at the beginnings of any precious metals bull market. And this is a comparison of there's one, two, three, four, five of the previous bull market upswings. So you've got one from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and then the two halves of this gold bull market that we have seen. And typically, you'll see silver lag for a little while, and then it takes off. It lags, and then it catches up. It lags, and then it catches up. And so these are the gains, you know, gold, silver. Gold, silver, this one wasn't very good. But in most cases, silver far outshines gold. And he wrote an article last month that I think you should read in combination with these articles. They complement each other very well. And that is about the gold-silver ratio, that it started a reversal. It was up in the 90s last month. It's back up to 88 today, which is uh, very good news for anybody that wants to purchase silver not great news for gold investors. Gold is on the move, but silver will catch up most likely. And if you look at these bands here from when the gold-silver ratio was at an extreme, and then it starts its reversion, you can see that gold lost 24%, but silver had 36% gains and during these time periods. So if you just take those bands and you put them in a dollar value, $10,000 invested in during these periods of times when the gold-silver ratio was re reverting. In gold, you, your $10,000 would have become $7,600, but in silver, $13,600. Gold, $16,900. Silver, $28,200. Gold, $20,000 in this 2008-2011 to 2011 bull market. Silver, $50,700. This is huge, and this is what I am looking for right here. I think that this is in our future. And then you've got 2016, gold 10,900, silver 13,600. So this gold-silver ratio reversion is something strong. I'm going to come back to this toward the end of the video and touch on it. But take a read of uh, Jeff's article from last month. Uh, it's also a very good article. Now I'm going to move on to the story that I want to tell you. This is gold and this is the S&P 500. The red line is gold and the blue line is the S&P 500 from the year 2000. I've lined these up on the day that the S&P peaked. So this was the year 2000 peak for the stock market. Actually, there, it looks like I missed by a day or two. Uh, so actually, this line here would be just a little bit lower if I had lined that up properly. So I've given the S&P 500 a very slight advantage here. But what you see is that gold by far, the precious metals, 
have been the best performing asset class of this century, period. Nothing has come close. When you're talking about a whole asset class, right now on this chart, the S&P was up 100% since, since its peak in the year 2000. It's fallen back and right now is it's at 90 0.87% above its year 2000 high. Now, if you inflation adjust that, that comes way down to here somewhere. Gold, however, is at 434.85% gains from the year 2000. But I want to tell you a story, and it has to do with this little area right here. Back in 2002, I made my first gold purchase, and what you see here is on October 23rd, 2002, I bought 23 one troy ounce gold eagles and they were $326 each. I think the spot price of gold back then was $318 or something like that. By the way, I'm a real te high tech guy. The way I photoshopped this is I scanned the old receipt and printed it out and whited out my phone number and anything else I didn't want you to see, <laughs> and then rescanned it and cropped it. And so that's what you see here. But it's got all the pertinent information. So uh, $326 for a tube of gold eagles plus an extra three. And then, so that was right back in here. I'm buying at this price back in 2002. And then it took off like a rocket and it's going up and I'm going, should I buy more? No, no, I'll wait for a pullback. Should I buy more? No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And it keeps on going up and I miss all of these little pullbacks because I was thinking about going in and buying, but you know, and I, so I finally go in and I make my purchase and here's the next purchase of 14 gold eagles uh, for $396 each. Well, guess what? That was on that day. <laughs> I bought right at a peak. And then the price started falling the very next day. And it didn't get back up above that price for one, two, three, four, five, six. It was seven months before it got back. So there was seven months where I was just kicking myself, just torturing myself. How could I be so stupid for going in? You know, I'm better than this. I'm, so I'm supposed to know better. And I bought at a peak. And then it finally broke through. Do I care today that I bought gold eagles for $396 and I still have them? No, I don't care. That peak means absolutely nothing to me today. So here is that peak right there. And I had to ride it out for seven months, but then look at the performance that we have had since. Now, about a, a week ago, I did an insider's video announcing that I was uh, I uh, had some cash set aside and I was going to buy some silver on the next pullback because I had looked at some technical analysis and stuff and I was paying attention to this and in my video what's up with silver which was a couple of weeks ago I was pointing out that somebody is doing this massive accumulation and this is major and in that video there is an error that I'll get to later Maybe I'll have to do a separate video on that because it, it's too complex for what we're going into right now. But somebody has been accumulating quite a bit. And this last bar here is not done yet. When on Friday, when the commodities exchange reports are made public, then you'll see this bar come up to at least here. This is just some of the vaults. So this is the total published repositories, mutual funds, ETFs, but it includes the commodities exchange. And the background here is the price, and then this is the total number of ounces. And the number of ounces being accumulated, there's some big investor or investors out there that are suddenly accumulating a whole lot over the past month. And I was going to wait for the next pullback because on the commitment of traders reports the commercials are heavily short but one day those commercials are going to get burned the price is just going to keep on charging up and then they're going to have to cover their shorts which means buy back their short position which is buying new contracts or new metals instead of selling them and that means it causes the price to explode now one thing i want to point out here is this is a chart of gold going all the way back to 1970 
So this is the 70s bull market, and it peaked at 850. And then this is the bull market of this century. Notice that it's got a, this is called a secular bull market, and it has a cyclical bear market within it. So there's this pullback that was um, 20 months long back in the 70s. And then we've got this long stretched out bull market, and it peaked at 1900, and then this cyclical bear within it, and I am absolutely confident that this is nothing but a repeat of what we had here back here in the 70s that shook a whole lot of people. A lot of people sold during this, and they took losses. A lot of people have sold their gold during this, and they took losses. I sat on all of my gold and silver, and I just keep on accumulating. Because for me, you know, I don't make any recommendations. I'm not telling you to do what I do. I'm just telling you what I do. You're welcome to join me if you want. Don't if you don't want. Do your own research. Come to your own conclusions. But what I want to point out is that we had an 850 high, a high at 1900, and then uh, you know we've done this pullback, and we're already back up at 1500 today. Silver is a different story now. This is a screenshot from Wikipedia, and it shows the highs of silver in 2011 and back in 1980. And you got 49, 45, 50, 50, 48, 70, uh, 50, 36, depending on whether they're intraday or whether it's the close of the day. And 5280 was the record, the intraday on the Chicago, from the Chicago Board of Trade. So 52.80 the high. Let's just call the 1980 high 50 bucks. We'll round all of these 48.70 uh, at the close, you know, 50.50, 50.36, 52.80. We'll round it to 50 bucks. 2011, 48.70, 48.55, 49.82. Let's call it $49. Silver has yet to pierce its 1980 high. Now, the reason I put that chart in there is simply because when I go to stock charts, it shows the 2011 high being higher than the 1980 high. I don't think it takes into account any intraday information, and uh, it's continuous contract end of day CME, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And so there's a difference in the sourcing of their data or maybe this is weekly data that it, it creates when you do such a long-term chart. It said daily, and it might be weekly, but there's some difference here. Anyway, this was actually higher than this. So you've got higher, lower, and lower. With gold, it was lower, higher, and almost as high. So silver is incredibly undervalued right now. This is the gold-silver ratio, and it's going back over a hundred years here. So what you see here is that there are periods where it's gold is, silver is tremendously undervalued and periods where uh, silver is overvalued and gold is undervalued com in comparison to each other. And recently we're, we were just up, this is from Jeff's article from a little over a month ago. It shows this ratio a couple of months ago and it has reversed, but it hit, I think, 92 or 93. Today, it is at 88 or 89, I believe, again. Moving on, this is a close-up that I just made of the chart today. Now, on stock charts, they only show end-of-day data for the commodities, for precious metals, and so this is actually yesterday's information. So it, it doesn't show the move to 17 bucks and to uh, 1500 bucks for gold. But it's the gold silver ratio. And what you see here is that, you know, there's a, a range, and we're up in this extraordinary range where it's been at very few times in history. But when you go back to this long term chart, when, you know, we're up right in this area, and you see that this is a very extraordinary thing to have silver so undervalued compared to gold. And when this reverts, to me, this is a huge opportunity. This has been part of my plan for years. Back in 1980, this went below 15. So silver's value was 1 15th of golds, and today it's almost 1 90th of golds. 
Well, if it drops into a range, which it, I believe it most certainly will, you have to come to your own conclusions. But if it goes to 45 from 90, that's a doubling. And so if you sell your silver and buy gold, if you buy silver now and you sell it some of it and buy gold at 45, you're going to get twice as much gold as you paid for, twice as much. If you held until, say, 30, you're going to get three times as much. If you went to 2250, if you think it's going there and you're able to sell there, you're going to get four times the amount of gold that you paid for. And I believe it's, it's going to take a crisis. There has to be a panic. Back in 1980, people were lining up at coin shops and stuff, and the dollar had only been a fiat currency since 1971. You know, there was raging inflation. There was a panic going on. There was a real crisis. People were scared. And it, when people made the shift from purchasing gold, when gold got too expensive, and that happened right about when gold passed $400 an ounce. When it passed $400 an ounce, people would rush in. And remember, back then, the average uh, annual income in the United States was less than $10,000 a year. So it was less than a fifth of what it is today. And so they'd take out 500 bucks out of their savings account, rush to a coin shop, say, I want to buy gold too. And the guy would plop one gold coin in their hand. They go, oh, is that all I can get? Well, how much is this? Oh, well, you can get 30 of those for each one of these gold coins. Okay, well, I'll take the silver. When the public shifted their preference from gold to silver, silver took off like a rocket and its value caught up to gold's right here. If you think there's going to be a crisis like that in the future, and I do, so my plan is to sell uh, my silver and convert to gold in tranches, and then when we get into these type of ratios, I'll be selling large portions of all of my holdings, but it'll be in tranches, but I'm never going to sell all of it. It's going to be a certain percentage and then a certain percentage of what's left and then a certain percentage of what's left of that and so you always have some left should it continue to charge higher. Now in Jeff's article remember I pointed out these periods where gold had outperformed or silver had outperformed gold. That's when this ratio is dropping. When silver is rising faster percentage wise than gold and these were those moves where you're getting 2008 to 2011, $10,000 would have brought you $50,000 back. I don't like trading in and out. I got on, you, you just saw my first purchases and my other purchases have been much larger than that. I measure my silver holdings now in tons, not ounces. I have gold at a certain ratio of gold to silver, but when the gold-silver ratio is this high, I buy only silver, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And then, last, I'm going to visit the Dow Gold Ratio. Today, we use the S&P 500 more often than the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but they track each other very closely, so you can really use either one for a proxy for the stock market. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the stock market and I'm dividing it by the price of gold and you get a ratio of what the value of the stock market compared to the value of gold. And there was a day back in 1980 where they were the same price and this ratio hit one. I don't know if it's going back to that same ratio, but when I, got, when I first started buying, I first started buying here, and that's when I made those first purchases. And I have been riding this thing the whole way, and I'm not going to let this bull market buck me off of its back, even with this pullback that has gone from 2011 to 2019, this cyclical bear within the secular bull. I have used, that. that's this right here, where the Dow was outperforming gold. From 2011 to actually 2018, gold has been outperforming the Dow again since uh, 2018. This is most likely, I mean, we just got news today that, uh, you know, last night, India and New Zealand and some other countries have cut their funds rates. The central banks have cut the funds rates. And the Federal Reserve is probably going to have to cut rates again. 
We are, I believe, heading into a crisis because you're seeing central banks all over the world making emergency maneuvers still. We never came out of the crisis of 08. We just put Band-Aids on it and, and blew the, the bubble far larger. By, we put Band-Aids on all of the holes and we blew a bunch of air into it with all this currency creation and, and interest rate manipulation. And that stores up energy. Well, it got the stock market to outperform gold temporarily. But the free market, the market, it isn't a free market, it's a manipulated market. But as it, the free portion of it exerts itself, it always ends up winning over the manipulations. And the manipulations end up causing a, it, that comes back to us as a crisis. And so when the energy is released, the stored up energy of the manipulation, it's a crisis. But it's the free market trying to balance things and they just need to leave it alone and let it do its job <laughs> and they won't have these crises. But they love living in a bubble. So we're going to inflate this thing. They might be successful at, at doing some maneuvers and patching this thing up and the markets will go higher. You know, I hope it does because we are in for one hell of a crisis no matter what they do. It's going to catch up to us, everything that they do. And the more that they do, the better it is for the precious metals. So if you're buying silver now and it outperforms gold by a factor of four, and then you shift that gold into, you know, you shift into gold and ride that until we get somewhere down in this range. And right now, this ratio is at 17 and a half. And so if it fell back to one, you're going to get 17 and a half times the performance times the, the four times the performance of gold if you're in silver. So that means that if you were successfully able to execute this plan, you would get 70 times more stocks. Now, I'm not going to try and nail exact tops and bottoms, but the, the point is that uh, you can do some amazing things by employing these techniques of shifting assets. And uh, the w gold and silver are the safest. They can't go to zero. They're the safe haven assets. So you get the opportunity, and these are rare opportunities. They only come once or twice in a person's lifetime, where the best performing asset class is also the safest asset class, the safe haven, safer than any currency or bond or stocks. Stocks can go to zero. Bonds can go to zero. Currencies can go to zero. Gold and silver in 5,000 years have never gone to zero. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you got something from this video. Please like it, share it, and make sure you subscribe. Go to goldsilver.com, subscribe to our newsletter. Just put your email address in there so that you get Jeff's articles. They're important. You really want to read those now and keep up on this, especially now that the precious metals have started their move. Thanks a lot, we'll see you next time. At goldsilver.com we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, and global storage options. Get the best-selling book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, for free at goldsilver.com.